Right. That right, brings up to speak to Neil. Tell us the squad news. Well, obviously, Ryan, you know, had the surgery. Um, so there are multiple fractures there eye socket, jaw, cheekbone. So he's had to have um, a bit of work done. I think he's come through it okay, and obviously his welfare is paramount too, so it'd be very doubtful we'll see him between now and the end of the season. Jack Hendry, he uh, tore his hamstring in a reserve game on Monday, so the prognosis is he'll be out for the season as well. Apart from that, the rest of the squad is looking good from, from the weekend. How are you feeling when you're within touching distance now? Not really giving it much thought, you know, we know what two wins will guarantee us that no matter what happens, so we're just trying to focus on that. The league's a priority now. We did a great job, well, the team did a great job last week, um, very convincing, and I'm just looking for more of the same now. Well, Mr Perennial Weekly question, any update you can give us on that might be here next season or might not be here next no, season? No, not at the minute. I would imagine once we are defined as league champions, if and then that happens, then we'll be down to the real business a lot after that. Yeah. You said at the weekend, Neil, that uh, you, you'd obviously spoke to them about yourself and you said, listen, ignore the noise. Uh -huh. Have you kind of said when you revisit the situation? No, I mean, I just spoke to them this afternoon and again, it's just, we're talking business as usual, about the team, about, you know, the big game we've got at the weekend. And that is my job. I'm doing my job and I'm enjoying it. Obviously, very difficult at times, but, um, yeah, I'm relishing the challenge and the players are responding to me, which is just great. And the backroom staff have been really good. So in terms of my future, I'm not discuss that at all. Don't really want to until we have some sort of uh, verification of where we are, you know, as a team. Uh, that's the most important thing comes first. Not my future or not my job prospects or anything like that. So I'm sure we'll have something to tell you in time, but now's not the time. Yeah, I mean linked today with the Fulham job. Could you look at what else out there are you very much focused on? No, I mean, it, last week it was all, you know, there was a string of managers in for this job and now this week I'm being touted elsewhere. So again, it's just noise. And it, it has no impact on me whatsoever. The other one you might have heard is the, the Scotland job. Uh -huh. Is international management something that would interest No. I like the day-to-day -day stuff. I think the Scotland job should be whether you think this is antiquated or not, uh, a Scotland man, and there's plenty of very good candidates, you know, in line for the job. I think the decision to remove Alec was uh, premature, and seemed to be based on one result, which is scandalous from my point of view. But um, there are a lot of good candidates out there, and it's a prime job, I think. Still, would you never be interested in the future, even in international management? If it's out of work, Ronnie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But no, no, again, I think it's, it's for older, more experienced managers, I think. And, uh, you know, what, what, even though I've been doing management now for nine, ten years, I still feel that, you know, club, club football's where my best interests are. And another issue, the decision to bring the squad round, case forward, what's the <clears> thinking behind that? I have no idea. You know, uh, the club asked for it. I think, again, we, we talk about these tribunals. Sometimes they're done within two days, and then the next thing it's done within a month, you know, so there's an inconsistency there with the timing of it. I think the club wanted it brought forward, so, you know, if there is going to be any retrospective punishment, then we get it over and done with as soon as possible. It doesn't really matter to you when this case is held? No, because I think he'll be found not guilty of any wrongdoing anyway. You'll get picked up right there. Did you say it should be a Scotsman that married yes. Why do you think that? I just think it's a Scot the national job. It's a national game here. I think the, the, what it would mean to a Scotsman to manage his country, you know, I put myself in, in those shoes of his managing my own country, it would mean everything to him. Um, and whether that deems to be, I think the, the public might want the best man for the job, and it might be out with. A Scottish guy, but for me personally, I think the best man for the Scotland job has, would be Scottish. That's just my own crappy opinion, you know. How attractive do you think the job is? You, know, you work with a large chunk of the Scotland squad here, but how attractive do you think it is in the country? Well, to be, to be the first man to take Scotland to a major tournament since 1998, it's got to be a huge incentive for anyone. Anyone. And I think the players 
there's a talented pool of players there who are capable of doing that. So I think, and not only that, it's a prestigious job. You know, I think in the modern game, the respect for the managerial position, whether it be club or country, is, is diminishing, and that saddens me. But it's still, you know, a very prestigious job in, in my view, and um, one that I'm sure a lot of people would would love. But Corbyn, many suggesting that we don't have the players in the team at the moment. But given how many Celtic players are in the Scotland team, what, what are your thoughts on that? That people seem the players just aren't good enough. Well, well, that's just an opinion, isn't it? You know, it has to be based on fact. And again, we go back to the Kazakhstan game, where all right, really bad there, but they beat San Marino. Whether people think it's unconvincing or not, they won the game. And they're back in the capable of Cyprus, of course they are. Capable of getting points off Russia, of course they are. And then that sets the, the whole thing up again. I, I think there's just too much knee jerk reaction to one performance and, and one result. Andy Robertson is one of the best fullbacks in Europe, Scottish. You know, you've got Ryan Fraser, who's written it up in the Premier League, Scottish. And the, there's a plethora of talented players playing in England, as up here, whether it be at Salt Lake or elsewhere. There was comments yesterday from Pat Evan who said that by dealing with the, the, the dismissal of Alice McLeish so prematurely, it would potentially put off top level managers from going for it. Is that something that you would agree with? Possibly, yeah. I, I didn't think, again, talking in hindsight, but at the time I didn't think getting rid of Gordon was the right decision at the time because he was making progress with the team. They were unbeaten in seven year qualifying games, and for me that was huge progress going forward. There was a style of play, there was an identity. Um, and then Ak was trying to get his own style of playing identity into the team, and it's been taken away from him. So he couldn't win. He did his job in terms of qualifying for the, the playoffs. That was one objective done. And what well, is he two games into the group and he's gone already? So for me, it's very premature. You make this game at the weekend, Neil. Um, you're the only man to beat up. Paul picking bottom hips. Looking forward to it, although Hibs are in great form. And uh, obviously, buoyed by. A deserved win at Tynecastle, and they deserved that for. It's been coming for quite a while, so delighted for the Hibs public. But obviously, we're coming here knowing what our motivation and incentives are, and that's to, you know, win, try and win well, off the back of a very convincing semi-final performance last week. So psychologically, the the boys are in a good place at the minute, and we just have to maintain that now. I think looking at the form table, you're both on like twenty points from the last so many games, and. I think that would be expected though from Celtic, but from, for Paul to come in and do what he's done has been tremendous. Do you feel that it seems as if he's getting a lot of credit for what he's done, but do you feel that, it's, I know you said it's expected at Celtic, but you're now getting the best out of your team? It takes time, you know, and it um, took time for me to get to know the players and vice versa. Starting to see, you know, signs of the improvement and the freedom and, and the way I want them to play. So, like I say, it was a pressure game last Sunday and the players negotiated brilliantly, so I'm just looking for more of the same come this Sunday. Are you able to enjoy it? I'm enjoying it a little bit more now, yeah. I didn't, you know, the first few weeks were tumultuous and obviously very high pressured and you're under a lot of scrutiny and you're getting judged for everything that you do basically, so, but I'm older and a bit more experienced in dealing with that. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot more now. You know, because you're, you can only keep your own house in order, but can I get your response to what Dave King said during the week that uh, Rangers are within tangible reach of becoming the dominant force in Scottish football? Well, it's not, it's not for me to say. You know, the, you know, I, I would think other people can give their opinion on that. I, I can only speak on behalf of Celtic, and you know, since 2000, you know, I think our record domestically has been pretty good because we've got good recruitment, we've got good people, we've got good board, class board who keep the powder dry and um, we don't talk ourselves up, we just try and maintain the standards that we've kept over the last 20 years or so. How important do you think that is then, for a manager you've just said, how you operate at a top level at a certain way, how important is that then for a manager when he has that sort of support? That's fantastic. You know, I work, and I have worked previously in my last spell with high class people, quality people, whether it be business or in football, so I've been very fortunate to have that experience as well. And they give you good advice if and when it's needed. Yeah. On the flip side, if those comments had come from a chairman to you, if you hadn't won the league for eight seasons, with that, how would you? Well, feel I mean, how would you feel? Total you know, total. again, I, I'm not going to comment on that. I'll leave that out there for other people to decide on it, Roman. You you mentioned uh, some of the, the noise that surrounds the, the football over the past few seasons. The Celtic lineups been leaking, maybe a couple of days in advance. 
Um, when you were manager of Hibs, did you pay attention to that at all? Did that I was, was never aware of it as, as manager, but I'm aware that the team does get leaked and I'm really not happy about it. So someone is letting us down. The other thing I was going to ask you was Ajax qualified for the semi-final of the Champions League. It was just three years ago we had played against them in the Europa League. What do you think that be it Celtic here could do to, to replicate some of the, the things that Ajax have done? It's a very good question. I mean, it's um, you know Ajax have pedigree in the competition. They've had a bit of a, a lull. To be fair, they have spent a bit of money this summer. You know, they brought in Blind and, and Tadic for, you know, around about 30 million. And obviously they've got high caliber, you know, developed players from their own academy. And obviously that's something that we can look at, but we have to just focus on how we want to go about it. It's a different environment, different circumstances. Ajax have had this reputation. You know, that academy doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's built over, 20, 30, 40 years. So we have, you could say, a work in progress when it comes to that level of football, but we've got to be delighted with the likes of Forrest, McGregor, Tierney coming through our academy in the last 10 years. Do you see the team links, uh, Neil? Have you spoke to the squad about that? No, I'm, I'm not convinced it's coming from a player. You know. Would you change the timing of your team selection then? I'd like to, yeah, but I mean, it's what the players are used to, so again, I'm going back to that, not wanting to change too much too soon. Something you consider next season, if you're here. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to the Champions League. I don't know how much you're aware about the discussions to perhaps revamp the Champions League. One of the things being considered is four groups of eight teams, and potentially one of the eight could be a team that's got a great history in the competition for Celtic as previous champions, could get straight in. What for you would be the ideal setup for a revamp Champions League Ooh. with regard to Scottish teams? Just a you know a fair opportunity to qualify. You know I think it's getting harder and harder. The timing of the qualifiers is so difficult for us. You know it's the first games you play almost straight away, and we've gone from May time from three qualifiers to four qualifiers. So you're playing basically eight games, the most important games of your season at the start of the season. And that's a quarter of a season, basically, in terms of you know eight games to qualify. So I think the qualifying route could be a little bit more fairer to certainly Scottish teams, that's for sure. As regards the revamp, if it comes, then we have to make sure over the next three or four years we are building to be prepared for that. And just one final point on going back to Scotland stuff. You're saying it should be a Scots. And Steve Clark said he wants to manage Scotland one day. Doesn't know if it's now. Is he the sort of calibre we should be looking at? Absolutely, he's an outstanding candidate. I don't think Kilmarnock fans will thank me for that. I and mean, Aberdeen fans won't thank me for saying that Derek McInnes is an outstanding candidate as well. There's two very good guys in the SFA building already who would be very good candidates. And there are other memes out there. Dave Moyes, Alec Neil, you know, Paul Lambert, you know, quality managers who could hopefully take the reins on. Alright. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.